You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for taking some time to chat with me today. Thank you for having me, Ryan. I look forward to it. Yeah, it's great, it's great to have you. Um, why don't we kick this off by having you do a quick introduction about yourself to our audience? Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Brian Pemberton, I'm the Vice President for Sales and Marketing at OmniSpace. Uh, we are a satellite company providing two-way communications uh, for mobile and uh, mobility use cases around the globe. Fantastic. So the reason that we're chatting today is um, there was a piece of news released uh, regarding your um, collaboration with what Lacuna Space, is that correct? Is that the- Yes, Lacuna okay. Space. Yep, um, kind of bringing this new IoT service to the market and um, we think it's super fascinating. So I wanted to have a few minutes here to kind of chat with you about kind of what this means, what it actually is. And I'd love it if you could just tell me a little bit more about the announcement and kind of what, what it, what it is. Okay. No, very good. Yeah. We are uh, very excited to uh, enter into this agreement with Lacuna space and uh, in, enhance the, the, the IOT offerings really for both companies on a global basis. So a little bit more about kind of you know, what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you and many of your, your uh, viewers are familiar with the LoRaWAN uh, technology for IoT implementation. Mm -hmm. And the team at Lacuna has done a, an exceptional job of working to adapt that technology uh, through their collaborations with Simtech and others to enable it not just in the terrestrial environment, but for two-way communications with a satellite as well. And so our relationship with Lacuna really is about taking that capability, that technology, and use OmniSpace's existing on-orbit assets mm -hmm. to now enable that service on a broad scale around the globe. Okay. So as our satellite uh, infrastructure uh, makes its way around the globe on a daily basis, uh, you know, reaching each part of the globe typically three to four times a day, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to provide this global intermittent service for IoT communications using standard uh, LoRaWAN capable devices. So it uh, creates a very cost-effective uh, and easily deployable uh, global IoT solution. Now, for devices that are already out and deployed on LoRaWAN, will they be able to kind of connect to this, or is that something, some kind of change that has to happen either to the firmware, to the hardware itself, in order for it to kind of take advantage of these benefits? Yeah, it, so the, the core technology exists within chipsets today but an element that's unique in, in what OmniSpace brings to the table is that we're operating in a licensed frequency band versus the unlicensed, which is where most uh, LoRaWAN services are deployed today. So okay. there's a new uh, chipset that uh, Symtech will be deploying. I believe it's the 1110. And that new chipset will have uh, frequency support for both the unlicensed bands that they've traditionally operated in, as well as um, some additional frequencies in the two gigahertz band which is inclusive of where OmniSpace is operating. So it would be, a you'd have to adopt a, the new hardware platform, if you will, or a uh, mm -hmm. device with the new chipset in it. But beyond that, it should very much look and feel just like Laura does today. And when you talk about license versus unlicensed, what's the main difference for our audience out there to understand kind of why one versus the other? Yeah, unlicensed, um, you know, typically uh, enables a expedient entry into a market. Um, because the regulators are basically saying, go operate under these parameters, okay. and it's a it's a best effort. You know, it's, there's others that could be operating in the band with different services. So the quality of the service, it, you might, you know, experience interference from other parties. In the license band, um, you know, the regulators effectively assign, you know, utilization of the frequencies to a single party, or sometimes it's multiple parties, but they have got to coordinate within themselves. Right. So when you think about like a, more robust or more mission critical type applications you typically would want to operate in a license band um because gotcha. it's kind of a, a higher uh in, implied qos or etc with with operating the license spectrum it, one of the things i read is that this is a kind of open standard based iot network what does that exactly mean and kind of what are the benefits of that so the omnispace vision has always been to uh try to harmonize or create a hybrid network, as we call it, uh, leveraging terrestrial technology and extending it to space. And the way to do that, if you really want, you know, this interoperability between uh, right. land and space, you need to use a standard-based solution. 
So okay. in this case, and you know, one of the things that attracted us to the team at Lacuna is that that's exactly what they were doing. They were using you know, a widely adopted uh, LoRaWAN standard, and we're now extending that capability to st space. So the fact that that, that quote unquote open standard is is really that LoRaWAN uh, capability that's that's widely deployed. Gotcha. And um, one of the things I'm curious to hear from your perspective is where do you see this capability and this this service playing the biggest role in the IoT space when it comes to increasing adoption, whether it's the industries that'll find the most value in it, the use cases that you think will will be enabled because of this um, kind of how do you all view it from that perspective? Well, I think, you know, looking at the, the LoRaWAN technology today and the devices that have been deployed in tens or hundreds of millions around the globe, is as we understand it, have largely been a lot of private networks where a company will come in and deploy a couple of their own base stations and then they'll put hundreds or thousands of sensors around a particular factory or campus or, or some sort of facility for those communications. And all of that, you know, deployment relies on there being some level of physical infrastructure power and other things there to backhaul that communications through that that hub right. by the satellite effectively acting as that hub it now opens up use cases that you don't need that terrestrial infrastructure you can now maybe deploy into um, scientific uh, studies that for seismic or other types of activities whether uh, agricultural, where you're beyond the reach of, you know, traditional infrastructure. And you can now deploy them very cost effectively because you're not trying to run electricity or solar panels or batteries or these other kind of things and maintain that infrastructure that may be in a very remote environment and difficult to uh, to get right. to. So that's the, sort of initially where we see a lot of the applications coming. Um, and again, really kind of complementing what mm. parties have done today and yet expanding kind of the, the physical uh, or geographic footprint of that addressable market, but also maybe some of the, the use cases and users as well. Absolutely, yeah. We've um, I've spoken to some other people that are in in a similar space in, when it comes to the satellite um, side of things and enabling broader connectivity. And they've talked to me about how rural applications are likely to see a lot of benefit from this and and things along those lines that need to move around a good bit more and maybe haven't had the best coverage in the past from from a LoRa uh, WAN solution. I kind of be curious to kind of get what you think about that. Yeah, I think certainly the, again, I think it sounds like some of your, your previous guests have talked about LoRa WAN in the sense that because you need that kind of dedicated physical infrastructure, sure, it doesn't really lend itself to mobile applications or, or mobility mm -hmm. because you're you may reach, you know, several kilometers, but or you know, then you're kind of outside that footprint without expanding that terrestrial infrastructure. So we do see opportunities, um, possibly in asset tracking or other sort of mobility applications, where the users, you know, don't have some of those same concerns now that you know throughout the period of a day the satellite is going to cover everywhere, and right. so if an asset moves. Uh, you know, from one side of town to another or across sure. the border or something, um, you can still keep tabs on it uh, very effectively. Absolutely. And um, I also saw that the, the protocol will be that's being utilized is the LRFHSS technology. What is that exactly for our audience to kind of better understand that? And it seems like it's designed more for high capacity IoT networks. So what does that all mean? Yeah, the the. It sounds like the general intent of that was for those, as you just described, high density installations. So rather than just having uh, maybe a couple hundred sensors into a base station, how could you do something that was, you know, you know orders of magnitude larger? But the, the LR component of that, um, I, I think, represents long range. And uh -huh. it, it just happens to be that the adaptations that, that Simtech was working on on the protocol um, also is supportive of satellite communication. So the range has gone really long now by sure. being able to, to communicate on orbit. In, in the case with our satellite, we're talking about um, you know, uh, not only 10,000 kilometers. So yeah. it's uh, it's really that that element of it, not necessarily you know focused on the, the high density capacity, but more that long range focus that, gotcha. that helps it uh, uh, extend the satellite and, and we think okay. a lot of benefits. 
And let me ask, how does this kind of fit into OmniSpace's broader IoT and communication strategy as a whole? Yeah, it, I think it helps accelerate and jumpstart kind of our broader strategy. As I referenced earlier, we really have this view of ubiquitous coverage. And we think the way mm -hmm. to do that is through that, you know, terrestrial networks won't be able to do it alone. Satellite networks won't be able to do it alone. So it's really a harmonization or hybridization of those. And so, um, you know, our the, the lower technology is very mature. And right. it's where we're working with uh, Lacuna Space, you know, to be able to enable this on a broad basis. Um, targeted IoT applications. We're also looking at other technologies like the 5G and TN as a mechanism to uh, kind of, uh, you know, enable a broader set of, of use cases with future infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And that standard is just now being uh, uh, mature. It's uh, uh, being set to be published uh, in the coming months. So right. that'll probably lag what we're able to do today by, by a couple of years as that ecosystem develops. Yeah, I was actually going to be a follow-up question. Is kind of where this goes for in, into the future. You know, what what is the the evolution of this look like for the industry? And I think if you look at the the focus at three GPP the last couple of years, you know, the cellular environment had been so focused on handsets and, and retail users. IoT was kind of an afterthought. Sure. They have adapted that work uh, in the four G standard to enable NB IoT and, and LTEM, and now with five G. Not only are they looking for IoT capabilities, but also to um, extend them those networks, those terrestrial networks, through non-terrestrial networks uh, okay. such as satellite. And yeah. so I think this this view of this you know uh, ubiquitous coverage or ubiquitous connectivity um, is you know what the future holds for for all of us. Whether the technology is LoRa or five G or both, um, they all have a role to play with different use cases and. Fantastic. And for our audience out there um, who's listening to this and wants to learn a little bit more, kind of read more about what's all going on and um, and the company itself, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I'd say visit our website at omnispace.com. Certainly you'll uh, see a lot about what we're doing, our vision and, and roadmap to activities. And uh, also uh, encourage them to uh, visit Lacuna Space. And they've got a lot of details about the specific service we're we'll be deploying in the coming weeks and months. Fantastic. Well, Brian, this has been a, a great conversation. Thank you so much for doing this and kind of uh, sharing this news with our audience uh, a bit more in detail, kind of what's going on. I think anytime we can increase the coverage and the availability of IoT networks to grow adoption, it's it's a win for everybody. So, um, so we appreciate all the work that you're doing and look forward to kind of seeing how this develops. Excellent. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching the IoT for All Media Network. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell notification so you get our latest videos as soon as they become available. But other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.